All right. Okay. There it is. Here we are. Can I not see myself? Maybe we're just talking to the camera. <laughs> Can you guys see us? If anyone is in there, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Let me know if you guys can see us. Is your webcam on? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's on. Okay. Okay. So there well, we, are. we could watch it over here. Let's see. It's okay. We're just going to. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, technical difficulties. I haven't gone live in a while, and so I'm still trying to figure it out. Anyway, um, we just want, I was going to start just with a couple things. Like I said, we're going to get to the uh, ask us anything kind of part of it, but I also thought I would just kind of just share some, some stuff that I found recently. In my recent videos, I had talked about belts men's belts. And so I just wanted to share a couple of those that I found after I did the video, because now that the uh, belts are on my radar, so that's exciting because then I can, um, I've like found a few really good ones because I'm, con I'm looking at them more consistently. Now, one of the belts I picked up the other day is maybe, could you get it on your phone? Mm -hmm. And then Get it on your phone, but like mute it just so I can see what I'm, oh, yeah, what sure, we're looking of like. Okay. Um, anyway, so I found this belt. I'll know in a minute if you guys can see it. <laughs> but anyway, I had picked this one up. It was Mezlan, M E Z L A N, made in Spain, and it's genuine crocodile. Oh, a little higher. Oh, see, it's going to be a little bit delayed. That's what I don't like. Okay. Anyway, um, it's genuine crocodile and it is in really, really good condition. When I checked comps on this, I think I can probably get, you know, $30, $40 or so. And um, I, yeah. So we had talked about in that video, the idea of exotic leathers kind of being something to, to keep an eye out for when you're looking for men's belts. And then one of the other belt brands I talked about in that video was Filson. And I talked about Filson right away at the beginning. And I talked about how the leather, the belts just aren't super common and they just all seem like that they were, they would sell pretty quickly. So then I found a Filson belt <laughs> the next time I went out to look. So very interesting. It's vintage. This is the only problem. We've got some damage and it's just really worn right here in one of the holes. And so I'm just going to price it accordingly and see if I can move it pretty quickly. So I thought that was exciting. I will have a video about women's belts coming up. I found a couple interesting ones. Maybe I'll share those later. But I just looking at the chat, we've got Amy and Melissa and Charlotte, Denise, hello, Denise. Hello from Tempe, Arizona, is that how you say it? And hi from Phoenix, so Arizona showed up. <laughs> okay, so the other thing I wanted to, because we're, we're not gonna hang out here super, super long, but one of the other things I wanted to do was give you the update about um, uh, my March. So I did that video about not thrifting as much in the month of March. <laughs> and so how have we done on that? <laughs> Hard not to thrift. <laughs> so I had, uh, we talked about it and I remember some of you had put it in the comments too. Like we were looking at how many things we have in our backlog and just trying to get ourselves organized in that respect. Um, and so we were like, we we're not going to not go thrifting, but we were going to be very, very selective right. in our thrifting. And so that was like, some of you called it, uh, moderation March or something like that. Right. So I don't know if, if have it, 
if anyone in the chat here is um, like kind of tried to do that in March as well, just let me know in the comments how it's going for you. All I can say is um, we probably didn't do so great <laughs> so far. Well, it depends on your standard of not thrifting. <laughs> we got some good stuff, but. Yeah, I mean, there was a couple of times I went. It was interesting. And I was by myself. So I'm throwing Mr. Pishposh under the bus because when we go together, it becomes more of like a recreation recreational event <laughs> and and we just have fun doing it and so like a couple times we went out and we went to this ongoing estate sale that we go to and you're finding stuff that's just not you're not going to find it every day and it might not necessarily be stuff that you can look up as like a comp for right away and make a decision some of it required research studio pottery, things like that. And um, so we just kind of for fun brought that stuff home. Some of it sold really quickly. We, you know, did pretty good with it. Um, but anyway, <laughs> look who's in the chat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> My son is in the chat. Okay. So we've got more people in the chat. Thank you guys so much for coming. We decided to do this live stream because we finally hit 5,000 subscribers and we just wanted to say thank you. And we really do appreciate everybody who watches and hangs out with us. Um, oh, we've got someone from Australia and then British Columbia. Okay, so Arizona Cats Sue says, I did okay for two weeks and then I failed. Okay, so that happens, right? And then Colorado. I took off in January until I listed everything I had. Well, almost everything. That's awesome. <laughs> I think our son is helping with the chat. <laughs> so I do, Amy, I did see your question earlier about how we ended up in Montana. Um, <laughs> I should make my son a mod. But anyway, okay. And... You have often spoken of, the little heart covers it. Okay, your attraction to vintage, is it hard to let go of? Okay, I'm just gonna start with this question and then we're gonna go on to some of the other questions too. Um, as far as keeping, like hard to let go of, like hard to sell, like we find vintage and then it's hard to sell. Um, sometimes, but not always. I mean, if, I think I find what happens sometimes is um, if I find something really, really awesome. Now, like recently, the belt buckle that sold really high, I listed that right away. I let it go. I, I didn't hoard that one. There's times where I find things that are just really cool. Like I'm never going to find another one again. And I think I've talked about this in the in the on my videos before. But one time I found this vintage typewriter. It's called an Olivetti Valentine and it's red and it comes in a red case and it's by an Italian designer and it, you know, it, they have it in the Museum of Modern Art and everything. And that typewriter I held on to for so long and didn't list it, even though I wasn't displaying it, I wasn't keeping it. I just was like, when am I going to find another one ever again? <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I just tend to kind of hoard those a little bit. And then by the time I sold it, it wasn't worth as much. So that was totally my problem on that one. Um, I mean, we got good money for it. We, yeah. So it just at the peak of when they were selling, they were they sold for much more. I would say from experience that letting go of the vintage stuff that we find that's cool, it's easier when it goes to someone who appreciates it. I think I've found that between both of us, it's hard to let go of vintage when it's not something people want, but it's really cool. Yeah. And we end up having to donate it mm -hmm. because you're like, somebody should want this. It's so cool. Right. I think that's harder to let go of to redonate it. Right. Rather than because you think it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like when you sell it and it goes to someone who really appreciates it, you're happy about that. Yeah. But when you just can't seem to find the right person for it and you have to redonate it, that's hard. 
Right. It's hard to let go of cool vintage in that regard. Yep. Yep, for sure. Let me see if there's something there. Sorry, I'm just checking something real quick. I was just seeing if something I was checking in the settings. Okay. My son is a moderator now. <laughs> okay. So you, sure you want to give him that kind of pat? I know, right? <laughs> He's only 11, so bear that in mind. <laughs> um, okay. So Charlotte went through her saved pile, found most of it not worth listing now. Sometimes that happens. I'm sure we're going to well, do that. So, like, yeah, don't feel bad. We just mm -hmm. did that. We have a Polaroid, a rainbow uh, Polaroid with the uh, attachment on top the flash the flash and i tested it everything works great unfortunately right when we got it it probably was worth a lot more than it is now so we're just going to hold on to it it's mm -hmm. kind of cool for display right but, yeah that does well there happen. was a time period on etsy where polaroid cameras were just like crazy money mm -hmm. you know it was a fad it was kind of a you know a trend before tiktok even was around it, you know, it was a thing to have one of those original Polaroid cameras. Um, but we found it either right at the tail end of that or something like that. Right. And mm -hmm. so it's like, we're finally getting to it. We unearth it, we're getting to it and it's not worth the 50, 60, $70. It was back in that heyday. Now it's, you know, $25 or something. I, uh, not quite. Not even. See, <laughs> it's, that's it's, crazy. It's better off on our shelf where I can just enjoy <laughs> looking at it. Maybe I'll get the Lego version and I'll build that and set there it next There you go. Day. It's so classic. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, we've got a lot of times, like we've talked about how we shop at the bins, right? We shop at our little clearance store. We call it the bins. It's not Goodwill. Um, and a lot of times you just bring stuff home, right? And I, I had said for March, I was going to try to do less of that. We didn't go to the bins as often this month. No, because that can be a little bit dangerous. Yeah. And <laughs> it's been crazy busy, crowded in there. I went today, got a couple things. But anyway, one thing I did get at the, uh, I got some Lego today at the yeah. bins and at the so Clarence it's... Center. And I got a women's belt that I have great hope for. It's Donna Karen. Donna Karan, Donna Karan, DKNY, made in Italy, and I could probably get good money. That for was that. in the belt spin? Yeah. Wow. And it's a size medium. It needs the brass cleaned. It's like it's got, it's almost like it's got hairspray. Yeah, that'll come off. On it. And Mr. Pishposh will clean that for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Denise is more of a newbie trying to get organized than get going. And then New York State, we're one of her favorite resellers to watch. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Hello from Illinois, family in Colorado. Oh, yeah, you're talking to each other. People are talking to each other. <laughs> Tim saying hi to everybody. Okay. <laughs> Do we wear gloves at the bins? I've stayed away from the bins but want to go. So the, our bins are tiny. They're just not that you shouldn't wear gloves, but... They're not like the Goodwill bins in some places where no. I know they have broken glass and they've got um because we went to those cockroaches in the past, yeah, and all sorts of rodents and things like that. So this is a very it's our local thrift store, has a clearance center. So stuff that goes out, you know, some stuff doesn't even go to the main store, it just goes straight to the bins because they have they get too much stuff. And then their pricing there is like, it's crazy, crazy cheap. Well, and they, yeah, it's not by weight or anything. It's just by bag. Right, right. So, so I'm not a glove wearer shopper. Well, they, they separate everything really well. <laughs> yeah. So at the Goodwill bins, when we have been to those in the past, yeah. uh, it can be pretty rough as far as what you find in there digging around. But in these bins, I mean, everything is separated. You have men's pants, men's, you know, shirts. Mm -hmm. The shoes are on shelves. So um, hard goods are are in bins on shelves. So it's not like you're going to, but yeah, I mean, things are sometimes a bit dirty, especially hats. I like to dig through the hats. Yeah. So, I mean, hand sanitizer. We for have sure, it in but... the car and we we take care, we do the hand sanitizer right away. Yeah. So Charlotte, what's an RLM buckle? That may be an RLM buckle. The belt, if it's, yeah, it's not DKNY. It's, it is the full name. 
Donna Karen, New York. Made in Italy. Yeah, it's a permanent buckle. I mean, it's, it's yeah. stitched in. So Teach Bake Thrift is coming to Whitefish and Glacier. We might have to visit your bin store while there. For sure, you should. Definitely. Yeah, they, they have stuff come and go like constantly. And I can let you know um, of the thrifts. I mean, you can just Google thrifts in Whitefish. There's some good ones up there. So, Oh, Robert Lee Morris. Okay, I'll research it. I'll cool. see what what info I can find about that. Thank you. Okay, so I know some of you had left some comments earlier um, on my post, and then and so I do. I want to get to those too, not just what's here. There's just one more there. I know. I'll come back okay. to it because some of these other ones were. Yep. So I'm gonna probably. I don't know. Some of you may not be surprised, but some of you may be disappointed. <laughs> In the fact that we are not the most organized resellers in the world. So I did get a lot of questions about uh, inventory systems and spreadsheets and organizing inventory. And um, what else did we get? In, okay, we can talk about storage. We got a question about our return on investment. We got a question about tracking our profit and loss and things like that. Okay. So I am not the most organized spreadsheet kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> and I think if I like, it would have been awesome. It would be awesome if I was, <laughs> but I think if I had and I've over the years tried to force myself to get more into the record keeping aspect of things. Um, and it just sucks the joy out of the whole reselling process. So there's a balance, mm -hmm. right? There's a balance on that because I pay my taxes, right? I, I have my, now I've done this for 17, 18 years. I know what I need to keep track of for mm -hmm. taxes. I just don't do it item by item. Some people do, and that's totally fine. That's if they're totally want to know exactly like I paid $5 for this and I sold it for 35 and they want end of the month to know their profit and everything. Um, I'm not going to get into the accounting systems and the, the different ways of doing it, the tax part of it, because I'm not a tax professional. I don't want to steer any of you guys in any one direction, but um, I'll see if I can add it to the video or add a comment or something at some point. Um, but there is a Facebook group called accounting for resellers. Um, I should have gotten his name ahead of time, but he has YouTube videos as well. And, you know, he covers a lot of different common questions that people have about keeping track of inventory, keeping track of what needs to be like kept track of, um, so, you know, I'm, I'm so slow. I finally this year started using an app on my phone called Mile IQ, which keeps track of your um, mileage for the business. And um, it's like a game changer. It's so easy. <laughs> I used to just write it down. I used to just keep track of it. You know, I know how far it was to this thrift store and, and stuff like that. Um, but we, so as far as like knowing our ROI, we're not going to know those numbers specifically because I don't keep track of things individually. Once a year, I pull all my numbers. Honestly, mm -hmm. I, I say every year, you know what? I should do this once a month. I should do this at the end of every month, do it 12 times, and then just add everything up at the end of the year. And I just never do it. And so I spend one or two days in April, <laughs> usually, <laughs> and I just pull all my numbers together. And I'd rather do that task like once. Um, it, you know, other people like, you know, their brains work that way where they want to have like the very detailed info about their business. And there may be a time as if we're trying to live off of this more where we have to get a little bit more yeah. 
aware of what's going on so far for us, it's been a second income. Right. And so um, we know we profit on pretty much everything we sell. Right. Like, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I can't think of things that we've lost a whole lot of money on, maybe broke even, you know, yeah, I mean, a handful well, of things here. And certainly there. certain things that we sell that maybe, I mean, like some of the tools that I sold, those were things I bought for work, right. Used them and sold them. So, I mean, we probably broke even on that or, um, but when it comes to what we actually buy to resell, um, it's rare that we end up having to, donate something mm -hmm. or take, you know, mm -hmm. we always make profit on it. Right. So even if, you know, we usually have one item, like in a thrift hall, we'll have one item that pays for the whole thrift hall. Then everything else is bonus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And so um, anyway, so that's like a disclaimer of don't do as we do. <laughs> Well, no. I, so can I, can I interject? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So it's always been your second, it's been your way of helping to cover expenses, right? Mm -hmm. So, but you've always managed to keep it balanced, mm -hmm. right? So trying to, to institute something like that has just never really fit with our needs, mm -hmm. but going forward, right? If we do this more ramp up the amount of listings we have, keeping track, then yes, we may have to look into that. Right. But up to right. this point, we've never had to, as far as our inventory system. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we, we just know where things are. We have right. our bins. Okay. So labeled. this is the second subject because we don't, there, there's people too that because they have a spreadsheet, um, they can record in their spreadsheet where, what bin they put a certain item in or, or things like that. Um, what we've done so far that just works for us is our a lot of our clothing, if it can fold, it just goes in a plastic bin. Um, we have it kind of divided by, you know, we'll have women's tops in one and mm -hmm. women's jeans, men's jeans, men's tops. If it needs hanging, we've got a lot of different little closet spaces that we hang stuff until it sells. We have our inventory at this point, we have 800 something things on eBay and most of those then are cross posted. We do have Ruby Lane items that are not generally cross posted anywhere. That's another like 400 items, you know, so we're over like a thousand, but we have like places for each type of thing. So I have these cabinets you always see behind me and like this one is coffee mugs. Right. So coffee mugs and breakables are in, in general. here, some breakables. I've got jewelry in the middle one, um, more breakables at the other end. So we've got, you know, if it's a kind of an odd shaped item that you want to make sure that you have a box, we have a ton of cabinet space in our garage. So you put it in a box. Yeah, and so just... certain items I, I basically find or make a box for the item if it's an odd size or a big size. Um, or if it's you know, breakable and I want to keep it protected, you want to make and I sure lay, that... I just put a sticky note telling me what's in that mm -hmm. box and that goes on a shelf. And that way, when I have to ship, I can just grab it. I don't have to go through the trouble of making or finding a mm -hmm. box. Um, but that doesn't work for every little thing. Right. Um, but just addressing the idea of um, I think it was earlier about goals. Mm -hmm. That is one of our goals mm -hmm. is to try to set up something a little bit more um, in the garage uh -huh. shelving that's dedicated to, to getting right. everything in one place. Right. Right. So. so we don't usually have a hard time finding something that's sold. No. Um, my most organized items are sewing patterns mm -hmm. <laughs> because they have numbers right on them and I can just file them in order. Super easy. Um, and then I have, um, Oh, flatware. We use a lot of sh just like plastic shoe boxes. And so shoe box size, like plastic containers. And so one might be Oneida community. One might be, you know, Gorham or, you know, depending on what back when I was, I had a lot of flatware listed, you know, so then I could just go real quick to that bin, pull out what sold and everything. So, you know, we have small areas where we're or more organized my jewelry, I have a drawer of brooches, a drawer of clip earrings, you know, and I've been meaning to kind of organize that a little bit more. And I might show that to you guys in the future um, when it's not a hot mess in that cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay. So there's a question from Denise about boxes we use to ship our mugs. So Mr. Hey, Pishposh will answer shipping that department. one. Um, yeah, so most mugs will fit in the priority seven by seven by six, um, but we also purchase um, the just plain seven, seven seven by seven by six for a ground advantage. So that's what that's what we use. Um, if we have a tall mug, you know, sometimes Starbucks makes those taller mugs, twenty ounces or so, uh, or something, you know, maybe something like this, but not that big. Mm -hmm. Then um, we'll put those in either a shoe box, priority shoe box. Um, or unfortunately you have to make something. We don't sell a lot of that, but most mugs like Shannon's coffee mug, uh, mm -hmm. safely will go in a seven by seven by six. And we used to do strictly priority because mm -hmm. our boxes were free. Uh, but with prices going up, we switched to buying the same size in ground and just a plain box for ground advantage. And we haven't had any like breakable we haven't had anything. Right. So ground with, advantage goes pretty. Quick. Yeah. So we were okay. all worried about maybe mm -hmm. that, but it's been good. So seven by seven by six is, is pretty good for shipping. And we mugs. do have a video about shipping mugs, mm -hmm. right? And we will be doing um, some more shipping videos with Mr. Pishposh. He'll be, we'll, we'll just do short little videos. I, I know a lot of times I mix them into my what sold. And so, um, I know then it's hard to reference them later. So we're going to try to pull those out. And then just as he ships something, we just still record it and just make a little tiny video there for you guys to see if that helps. Um, I saw a question there. I know there's been a question repeatedly about whether we promote our listings. Uh, yes, we do on eBay. I just use, um, I've played around a little bit like where, the they change the percentage and i don't know that scares me because it it'll you know you can kind of cap it but i just use the very basic everything gets promoted at two like two to three percent is what i've been using um sometimes we'll bump it to four or five like when things are slow just to see if that makes a difference and we're, i'm just viewing it as another it's just a cost of doing business Costs are definitely rising for reselling. Um, eBay could raise their percentage and I would keep selling on eBay. This is like their way of raising their prices, I would say. So I know there's ways like you can do it item by item. So if you have an item that you don't think you need to promote, it's just simpler for me. I set it at two or 3%. All new items get added to that. And um you know, I just kind of do that across the board. Sometimes if I'm running a sale or a coupon, I should say, then I'll drop that percentage if I'm doing a little bit of a higher coupon and just kind of try to balance things out a little bit there. Okay. So yes, Judith, there was a video. We cut down a box for a large mug or two mugs together. Yeah. Oh, I shared one of your items on Poshmark. Sorry, it was my bot that shared. <laughs> but that's exciting. <laughs> I use Posh Sidekick. And um, I'm just, you know, I think the days are over. People were always like, you can't use bots and you can't use this. But like everybody does, right? And so nothing has happened so far. So uh, Posh Sidekick, I use that one because I have... Um, it's on my phone and it's running all the time and they have, they have certain uh, like safeguards in place so that you're not sharing too much. You're not sharing too quickly. Um, but mine shares for me and then sends offers automatically to people who like, like it. So that kind of is so nice because Poshmark's just kind of running in the background all the time. It even shuts down for a few hours overnight to make it seem more realistic that, you know, it's not um, a computer. But anyway, I usually have a, a link to Posh Sidekick in my, you know, in all my description and stuff like that. And so in any of my videos, you can probably find that if so I don't get it put. Just quick, as yeah. far as ads, right? Like yeah. Etsy now offers sponsored or ads that you can pay for. Mm -hmm. We don't use any of those. Like Okay. In... Yeah, we should talk about some of the other um, platforms. So um, 
Etsy, I use, they have offsite ads. It's a huge, just like, ugh, bone of contention uh, for Etsy. Um, they're optional until you make a certain amount of money um, per year, $10,000 or something like that. After that, they force you into it. So if the buyer finds you off of Google or something, you're automatically paying an extra 15% or something in fees, right? So what I ended up doing is it's optional before that. So none of my, you know, we're not big on Etsy anymore. So none of our shops hit that threshold. But my sewing pattern shop, I have it turned on in that shop. And I get maybe one or two sales a month from, from that. But, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Um, and then, but our other stores, we don't have that. No, on. I mean, you just, yeah, just try to find. Now Poshmark started a promoted listings thing and I haven't heard anything good about it. Some people got to try it out for free, like Poshmark paid for it and they were like, no results. There's like no difference at all. So, uh, Depop does have like, you can boost some listings, but you can pick which ones like you want to boost. And I boosted a few recently just to kind of see if it made a difference. And Depop is so dead. anyway. <laughs> I don't know what was, what would help Depop. Um, and then Ruby Lane does have advertising, but I've not paid anything, you know, on there for that. I, I think a lot of like Etsy and Ruby Lane and places like that, it's just listing new things. Even mm -hmm. eBay, you could skip the promoted promotions if you want completely. A lot of people do, but just as long as you're consistently adding new items, that's and and desirable items, that's going to get you sales more than more than anything. I think so. Right? And that seems to be the trend is if if you list stuff consistently, mm -hmm. you'll have sales. So. Right. Okay. What do you think about listing the same products under the same name on multiple platforms for different prices? I think it's fine. I our our shop names are all kind of similar, but they're different. I, I think we have a couple stores that might have the same name or same whatever. Um, and there's times where I'll list things a little bit higher on Poshmark because I know I'm going to send maybe a, more of an aggressive offer on there. And their fees are a little bit higher. Um, you know, it's it's rare. It's rare that stuff sells at the same time on different platforms. This is why I cross list a lot. Um, but they, yeah. So go ahead. Can I say something? <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. I I think yeah. at first when we first started doing it, it felt a little weird. To me, mm -hmm. to have something maybe on one platform cheaper than on another, but it's the same item. Mm -hmm. But in looking at it and seeing how it works, it's just different markets. Yeah. It's different customer bases. Um, so I, I mean, I try to keep like things that I list. I try to keep tabs on it, but mm -hmm. like on certain things like Mercari, mm -hmm. it allows you to make an offer. And once you make that offer, um, it kind of lowers that price uh -huh. almost permanently, right? For those people. And then if you promote it, it drops that price mm -hmm. and it stays at that lower price. So you might have a discrepancy there. Like on eBay, it might be a different price. Um, but I think people, when they're shopping, you know, I know when I do this, um, I'll look even on Google mm -hmm. and you'll see the same item on two platforms. Mm -hmm. And so if you yeah. just, if, if you just find, you know, if the price is a little bit different, um, I think it's just people buy on the platform they're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as long as it's not a huge discrepancy, but right. I don't think it, right. it really deters people. And I think a lot of buyers kind of know, you know, that things are on more than one platform. Well, they're and, just kind of getting used to that. Yeah. We've had things on eBay. Um, and then we've changed the price or I changed the price. You didn't know about mm. it. I would lower the price or I would mess around with it, trying to tweak it to get some and interest And I still in had it. it high on Poshmark. Yeah, Poshmark, because I didn't have access to that. It was just sitting there at the same price. So I had dropped eBay's price. You know, again, it's not like she didn't know what was going on. And then it sold on Poshmark at the higher price. Mm -hmm. So that sometimes will happen. Um, it's just a different market. 
different group of people. Yeah. And I think even having the same name probably helps then, you know, if somebody is shopping around and sees a bunch of different results on Google, you know, they might be like, oh, it's the same shop, you know, and then they'll pick whichever one. If they're really like compare comparing, you know, they'll pick the one where they want to pay for it, you know. Okay, so we had some questions, I think, that I also want to make sure I didn't miss. Um, Arizona Cat Sue, okay. Do you polish silverware? Um, yes and no. <laughs> so do I personally polish D silverware? Define polish. <laughs> no, I actually do the polishing if it's like flatware or something like that. So, Well, you're talking about silver, like silver flatware? Yes, right? Okay, so the rule of thumb that I've gone by is if it's sterling or if it's silver plate or whatever, and it's something that's meant for food use, um, then polish. Um, you know, jewelry can be a different story. Sterling doesn't always, people don't always want those polished. Um, but if it's something food related, you know, candlesticks, maybe it depends on how how they look unpolished. Some people like them unpolished, you know, some people don't want to spend the time and they'll just sell them lower. Um, so yeah, I think that probably slows me down the most from listing some flat, like sterling or silver plated flatware is, um, you know, if it needs some heavy duty polishing, I use, um, there's one I, I had had recommended to me. It's called mother's. And that works really good. It's pretty potent. Like you want to have gloves and you want to have ventilation <laughs> when you use it. Um, and then like stainless flatware, we just clean it. We yeah. don't polish it. It you know, kind of we'll... depends on the condition. And mm -hmm. But sometimes like I just did some the other night and I just used a little bit of Windex on a rag and it they look great. Yeah. But we don't, yeah, we don't really polish that. Sometimes if it has a little bit of um, not discoloration, but a little brass bristle, bristle mm. toothbrush mm -hmm. will help take that off or maybe get a little gunk out of, out of a crevice. Okay. Let's see. Uh, just double checking. Okay. Our backstory. That's right. Sorry, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> our backstory, um, how we ended up in Montana Okay. The short answer I'm from, well, it's probably won't be very short. I'm from New York. He's from Washington and Montana. So, um, he lived for a short time here, uh, the same area we're living now, um, when he was what, 10 to 15. Mm -hmm. So he's got family here. Um, we lived in New York. He came to New York. We lived in New York for a while. We moved to Washington, the Seattle area, all, all around the Puget Sound. And then we just were looking for a change about four years ago, almost exactly four years ago, and came, came to check things out. And we weren't really sure. To just We just kind of came to see if we could find some place to rent here. And... Um, Sorry, I'm sure that's noisy. Um, anyway, and we found something like on that visit right away, a rental. And then the pandemic started while we were here. And so we got everything figured out and went back and packed up and moved back to Montana and have been here for four years now. So, so yeah, this is kind of like coming back to where he was from. So um, we like it. Yeah. Very much. It's not as sunny in the winter as you would expect. <laughs> We're in a valley. We're in, the We're in the mountains. We're in the Flathead Valley. It's pretty foggy and cloudy all winter long, which is, has been really hard this so winter. So eastern Montana. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I think when people think about Montana, they picture eastern Montana because it's kind of wide open spaces. Um, it's a lot more sun, but it's colder and windier. Um, so Western Montana, I mean, we're in the Rocky mountains and so we get the weather coming from the West and it kind of piles up against the mission mountains and all of that. So yeah, it's a, it's a little bit, it's a little bit more like Washington than I expected as far as mm -hmm. the weather. When mm -hmm. I was a kid, it was a lot colder. 
they seem to remember it being um, a bit more sun, um, but the weather has changed over the last 20 years or so. Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, the, the friends we've made and, and the boys love it here. Um, so, no, it's, it's been a good move. Um, what was I going to say? Something about, oh, it's definitely hotter than Washington in the summer. Um, it's dry. It's a lot drier here. So it's cloudy, but it can be cloudy, but dry. You know, you don't get that damp cold. Um, last Monday, it was like, and Tuesday and Wednesday, it was like 60 degrees and sunny. We were all rejoicing. Mm -hmm. And then this past weekend, we got five inches of snow. (laughs) The temperature went down into the teens. And the temperature, it was like 15 degrees when I woke up today. So yeah, spring in the mountains. You gotta love it. So, what about you guys? Where wherever you guys are, has spring started yet? I know some of you are in different parts of the world and different parts of the country, and might have good weather all the time <laughs> compared to us. But best prices for mug boxes. Um, I have a couple. Where do I buy my boxes? I I have a couple. St- places I shop from. I just go to Amazon a lot of times and just look for the specific. um, So we've talked about this. Yeah, We've talked about, well, I mean, I (laughs) talked about it. I don't know. Maybe you were listening. Um, Trying to kind of maybe compile a list of where we we get our shipping Mm -hmm. supplies, um, not just for um, assisting or giving the information out, but also just for us. Because for the most part, I'm the shipping department in terms of putting everything in the boxes. But I don't really know where we get the boxes. Mm -hmm. Shannon has always sourced our bubble wrap, you know, our boxes. I I generally get like the paper. I'll get it at Home Depot or Lowe's Mm -hmm. because I'm there anyway. Um, So, yeah, we've been talking about that, trying to kind of create or I would like to create something that Mm -hmm. we could I could work off of, kind of take the load off of her. If I need something, then I can just order it from the same place. Over and over. So a lot of times I, I just shop eBay. I shop Amazon and I go into my purchase history and see where I bought from before. And then I check prices, you know, cause you want quality as well. I think box prices have gotten crazy expensive too. Um, so there was one where recently I, I had to do like change the source. Cause I was like, this is not even worth buying these boxes, mm. you know, because anyway, we do you re- reuse a lot of stuff. So mm-hmm. in the past, we had um, people who would bring us, they would get a lot of stuff on Amazon and and just online, and we would get a lot of boxes from them. But um, like with mugs and things, we need something consistent. We go mm-hmm. through those a lot, like the hat boxes, the mug boxes. Um, so yeah, getting that information Let's would be it. good. Okay, so I... Uh, Deborah asked about whether I have a video about doing multiple listings. So a variation listing with different types of items, flatware, breaking it down into specific pieces. So I tried to make a video about that recently (laughs) and I got frustrated because I wasn't doing it with flatware. I was trying it with another, another item I had. It was hair combs or something like that. The hair picks. Cause I was like, Oh, I'll just do a quick variation listing. Well, there's certain categories that you cannot do variation listings in, which I did not know that. So I spent all this time like messing about trying to figure that out. And I was trying to record myself doing it and finally got to the conclusion that it was impossible. So I abandoned that video cause <laughs> I was so tired, but I do have some flatware coming up that I'm going to put into a variation listing and I will record myself when I do that. <laughs> and so there will be a video about variation listings coming up. Okay, so we've got weather, Long Island, New York. A few nice days, but it's been cold here. Daffodils just starting. Long yeah. Island. Long Island. We didn't have, um, I think, um, I don't think we had anything blooming yet before the snow came, which was nice. No, it wasn't warm enough for that yet. Do we have a granger near us? No, unfortunately, we don't have we, a lot of things near us. We have nothing That's the near one us. thing that I would say, having moved from Washington to Puget Sound, we had access to 
just about anything you need as far as product goes mm -hmm. and thrifting. Here we do have quite a bit of thrifting, which is nice, but we don't have a lot of suppliers for things other than the box stores. So it all has to be shipped in because we're kind of um, off the beaten path. But yeah, Granger is a, is a good one. I would say for people who are looking for supplies, Granger and Uline, U-L-I-N-E, we get their catalog. Again, pricing, I have no idea, mm -hmm. but like Shannon said, you can get most things either on eBay, right, or mm -hmm. just Amazon, mm -hmm. so check those for prices, but yes, Granger is a good option to look at, um, especially if you have one, you know. Yeah, because then you don't have to pay for shipping. And you, you can, can order online up. from Granger. Mm -hmm. I just, I haven't personally ever checked their their um, shipping products, but appreciate that as far as mm -hmm. an option. Right, and if, you know, if anyone else watching has a Granger, that might be an option they didn't realize. Um, uh, Andrew, welcome. First time catching us. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. So I did have another question from Charlotte I had left a comment before, and I didn't want to miss that one. Um, how many hours a day? Are you ready for this one? I'm ready. How many hours a day do you put into the business, <laughs> including sourcing, listing, packaging? Do you work it every single day? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. So I I can answer my side of it okay. is because I, you know, I work in construction has been my primary um, source of income. So during the winter, I put a lot more time into reselling, mm -hmm. um, partly just because it does slow down a bit, but also because it's just really cold and, and it's a nice way to, uh, you know, kind of up the, the listings without having to, to go out. We're trying to do a little bit more of that. Um, but yeah, I think a little bit each day. Um, we're not we're not pounding it out, to be honest, as far as, you know, but some days, you know, I'll try to do quite a bit more depending on the situation or dive into things that we have in the garage and clean them and list them. Mm -hmm. um, but I think just a little bit each day, really. Yeah. I mean, our schedules are we have a lot of different. I do volunteer work and you have sometimes work that you go out to. We have our kids that homeschool. Um, so every day is kind of different as far as how much time we spend. I wouldn't say there's a set amount every day. Um, and some days I'm so busy with the other stuff that I just crash. <laughs> I don't, you know, um, sourcing, a lot of times I'll do sourcing when I'm out, I'll, I'll be out doing something else. And then at the, when I'm done before I come home, I'll hit a thrift store. Yeah. I think multitasking is important. Yeah. Like if I go or to the we post take, office. we take the packages to the post office. Um, we used to be able to have a package pickup and that kind of fell apart. So we've just been taking packages to the post office every, for about a year now, probably. Right? Yeah. Once we didn't have the option of the pickup. And so, you know, try to drop it off hit a thrift store on the way, you know, make that time count. Andrew, I work in my sleep. It's <laughs> the downfall of working from home. It's true. It's always there. And there's yeah. times where, you know, he's still working like late at night and I start getting, Oh, like you're working too much. But in like, in his mind, like if he, you weren't feeling good that day or whatever, your mornings start off kind of slow or you have something else going on, right? It's just your work day has kind of shifted. Yeah. But like you said, it's always available, right? So we do try to find balance, right? We've talked about, we were yeah. actually talking about that recently. Right. You know, family balance. So we are, you know, sometimes we thrift as a family, right? We drag the boys with us and yeah. we say, hey, let's, we're going to hit some thrift stores, maybe do some disc golf and get get dinner or something like that and just kind of combine it all so that we're all together yeah. doing that. And I have, I have done that big long days where I just, I'm, I say, I'm going to do this many listings of clothes mm -hmm. and I want to be ultra efficient. And I, you know, and I even get one of the boys to help me write down measurements and I just mm -hmm. blast it out. And I feel like, Oh wow. You know, I put in this big long day, but then I don't want to list. Like I burn myself out on that when I, when I fit listing in among other things, mm -hmm. right. Take time to sit and do something with the boys, mm -hmm. you know, help them with their school or whatever. And then 
I just find that I have more stamina to list when I fit it in around the other things right. than if I just try to pound it out. It's true. Not to say that, you know, if you have the circumstances uh -huh. to do that. And but, the energy, because we're old. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, fitting it in. So that might, you know, that might be a little different than others, but it seems to work well enough for us at this point that we can mm -hmm. keep it balanced and, and enjoy it. And when we're both working on it, it's kind of nice because like, I know he's listing and I'm outsourcing, you know, so a lot of times it's, you know, kind of flip flopped. Or then if he has a job where he's going to do construction or something, then I'm home and I'll list that day, you know? So there's yeah. usually one of us listing. So that helps with our consistency. And then, I mean, just one other thing I'd like to mention, sometimes what I'll do is I'll kind of put pictures or I'll, I'll get listings prepped to a degree. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm, you know, at the chiropractor, I'll sit there and I'll finish a listing and I'll post it. Right. Mm -hmm. Or I'll, I'll have pictures in my phone and I'll add them into Vendu. So it's kind of like, yeah, like, like Andrew was saying, you can kind of do it all the time right? without doing it all the time. Right. right? But yeah, I think it just becomes a part of your daily routine and then we can kind of keep things fresh, keep things consistent. And Andrew's listing as we speak. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's, that's very smart. I always say if I'm, you know, when I record my what's olds and my whatever, I'm like, you guys just, you listen, <laughs> mm -hmm. you want to keep working, you know, just listen to what I sold or whatever video I'm doing. Okay. So I'm popping back up to Lucy. Um, had a question about 80s Corel dishes. Poshmark doesn't let you ship over 10 pounds and actually five pounds anything over five pounds, you're going to pay the difference in the shipping label, not your buyer. And then you can't do anything over 10. How would you ship those with a total weight of 17 pounds? I'd probably break it all up. I don't or know. we don't really ship. We don't ship like big. whole dish sets yeah. like that. I, we usually, we, we usually break things up and there's always the possibility someone will buy everything if you break it up. But, um, yeah, I think, I mean, in general, as far as dishes go, I think that we usually, like, you know, if it was salad plates, we might do six or eight, mm -hmm, you'd fit mm -hmm. in one box, um, dinner plates, or whatever. but I don't think we've ever actually shipped that much. Like a whole dish set. No, I, to be honest, I know people I, do. Yeah, and it, and it can be good. I just, uh -huh. I think it's something we've probably avoided uh -huh. just because I don't like shipping plates. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that's a lot of shipping. I mean, so if I can, if we can do it in one box, like I just listed some plates and I broke it into two, um, two separate listings because uh -huh. it's just easier to ship. Right. And they were slightly different size. And there's a chance someone will buy them both. True. And then you just have to deal with then that. You, then you have to do it. But when you're talking like a whole dish set, like with mugs and bowls and plates, you know, and things like that that can be kind of tricky. Mm -hmm. Um, so pear tree finds, I know I've, I know I've looked at mountain mountain, mountain man treasures before. I, he's, he's Montana, right? So I just can't remember. I think I looked him up and he was in a different area mm -hmm. <clears throat> from us unless he's, unless he's near me and I'm totally wrong and I've run into him and I didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'll double check that and look him up again and see where he is. Thank you, Kathleen, um, for the congratulations. Mm -hmm. And do our kids groan about thrifting <laughs> with us or do they enjoy it? It just it depends. depends on the day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would say they're they better now than they were when they were younger. Yeah. Um, but it depends on the mood. Yeah. Um, the oldest likes to read, so he beelines for the bookshelf. Yeah. So he, he just goes to the thrift store. Yeah, he doesn't section. he doesn't want to shop, he doesn't want to look. Mm -hmm. Um, he just likes to find books to read. Although he'll look at maybe electronics or computer yeah, stuff. Or sure. Whatever, but right? that's for him personally. Yeah. He finds, yeah. he finds that stuff. Um, the himself. younger one, you know, he's hot and cold. One day he wants to, you know, list plush and, and help us sell mm -hmm. and, and he'll go gung ho. And then um, he kind of moves on. So, right. Yeah. I mean, they, they're okay. And we, we, just, we just say, make them come with we anyway. We just say we're going. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, it's not that. And they always end up with that, good stuff, no. right? They're always like, come home with books. They come home with stuff they didn't expect. If that's the worst we ask them to do in their life, then they've got it pretty good. They do. Okay. 
Did we get all the questions? Any other questions, anybody? We're probably going to wrap it up here pretty soon. We got to go feed those children. <laughs> I do want to show you one last belt, and I will talk about women's belts in a video coming up. But I did, um, like I said, I did the men's, and um, I found, I mentioned at the beginning, I did find a Filson belt that's got a little bit of, you know, wear. So we're going to see how that does. And then I showed you the other belt, but I found this one the other day. I was so excited about it. I paid $2.50. And I think you'll be able to see it, but it's like huge honk and buckle. It's very eighties looking right. And it's got these stars. It's in really, really good shape. I would say, I don't even know if it's been maybe worn. There's a little crease in that one. Yeah. Barely much. worn. And the brand is Escada. And it's made in West Germany. So definitely from the 80s, Western Germany. And Escada is one of those women's clothing brands. Like it can be, it can be really good. Like I sold a suit not that long ago. Mm -hmm. Teeny tiny little vintage Escada suit for like 80 bucks or something like that. So it's like it doesn't sell super fast, but it's it's like a good brand. And um, anyway, so I do think I have another Escada belt around here in the profit pile. Mm -hmm. But this that one's more plain. And this one has this awesome these awesome stars. And so I have high hopes for this one. I'm going to shoot for 100 and see where I land. But we'll talk about belts. Like I said, I'll talk about belts more. Okay, is there any category that you want to learn more about for reselling? You know, I I am enjoying what we're doing with the channel where we're taking like kind of little niches, niches, and we're we're exploring and we're doing a little deep dive in like we did neckties and mm -hmm. picture frames and kitchen utensils and some of the stuff I knew about already that I was just sharing with you guys, but like belts, I'd never really researched it before. I would just cursory look and like the things I kind of knew, I would I would grab a belt and sell it, right? Chico's women's belts or something like that. And it's like after I did that deep dive on men's belts, I'm like, that's like untapped. There's like information that I should have known, right? So it's kind of fun to do those videos because that puts so much more stuff on my radar. And, um, so I was trying to think of more areas of the thrift store that maybe I just don't dive into We're we've been playing around with gla more glassware. Yeah. So for me, I mean, I, you know, we have varied interests, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know why I'm kind of drawn to, to glassware. Mm -hmm. And so I just think it's a niche that I go into the thrift store and it's shelves and shelves of glassware. And I, I'm not talking just like glasses in general, but um, crystal. So we found at our bins um, when we first started going there, um, you know, there's just shelves of, of glass and nobody's looking at it. They're all, you know, digging in the clothes and the hats and the shoes. And so I'm over there by myself and there's a Waterford crystal bowl. Mm -hmm. and I mean stuff is pennies there so I went ahead and bought it and it sold so fast and ever since then I'm really like tuned in to crystal and glass and I found some interesting things but you have to it it's really hard sometimes to track down what it is so mm -hmm. for me that's where I'm playing around with is right. trying to you know research and get to know what what the names are so if you see the etching on the bottom you can tell right away if it's worth it or mm -hmm. not. A little bit of studio pottery. I've talked about that in my what solds. Um, like surprising value in some of those. Um, other other categories? I don't know. Like I don't know anything about selling pajamas, you know, like <laughs> night. I mean, I kind of know some nightgown stuff or whatever. Like, but do I really want to get into it? I don't know. Um but I think it's good to know some of those things. Like, um, I don't know. I did the hair accessories video and I was like, now I know some stuff, That's right? And you just, you kind of file those things away. Um, okay. Let's see. 
If you guys have any suggestions for categories that you would like videos on, go ahead and leave that comment down below too. Tips for loading up photos for the listings. That has been very time consuming for me. Okay, so it depends on how you're doing it. Like, are you taking, wow, Paula, thank you. Thank you, Paula. Thank you for the, I forget what you call that, a super chat or something mm -hmm. like that. Thank you so much. Um, I, now I lost the question. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Loading, uh, loading photos. photos. So I take <laughs> pictures on my phone and I do, like there's been, I've done it different ways over the years. Like, so you can start so your- So what are you doing now? Okay, well, I'll- it depends. <laughs> I don't want to get too complicated, but if I'm if I'm listing straight into Vendu, which I've been doing mm -hmm. a lot of, I just load my photos into Vendu. Um, they've been having a little glitchiness about photo order, so then you kind of have to rearrange. It's been kind of frustrating. I did it today, and it didn't. It was to, fine. It didn't seem a problem. Um, and so it, then that just you know they just load into there. Because I have Vendu on my phone, so I just put the photos from my phone straight into the Vendu app, and then they show up on the Vendu on your computer. When I'm listing straight to eBay, eBay has a feature where it says, get your photos from mobile. I love that. So you click that, and then on my phone, I have an iPhone, it shows up, you know, add your photos to this listing. Mm -hmm. I click that, add my photos, bam, and it's in the draft it's like fairly fast yeah. for us. Yeah. So I think for me, I've gotten to where I used to, you know, way back when we used to do everything on the camera, put it in the computer right. and then put it in from now. Now everything's on the phone. And then what I do is when I'm listing, um, I just open up my template. Right. And mm -hmm. I put in my title. This is in Vendu. Put in my title. I hit save and then it'll show up in the app. Mm -hmm. I add my photos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my photos will pop up right in front of me on the screen and I can see them and rearrange them. And then I finish the listing and post it. Mm -hmm. So that seems to work really quickly. Sometimes I'll do that in advance. I'll just, you know, create a bunch of listings in Vendu, add all the photos off my phone, mm -hmm. delete the photos. Then so I have room yeah. and then they're ready to go. Right. Hopefully that helps. Okay, so Lori says Escada was a luxury brand until they were bought out. Okay, that's good to know. So I'm sure the, that's why the vintage Escada sells much better. Andrew was telling us about a necktie. It's a 1963 World Series Dodgers Yankees. Cool. That's really cool. Um, yeah, that's neat finding stuff like that, especially yeah, if it was not the his produced for, for specific people. Right. That's always fun to find. Okay, you're welcome, Teach Bake Thrift, Escada. In a small town. town Montana, yeah, I <laughs> well, know. We find stuff in a small town in Montana. You would be surprised, but, you know, a lot of Californians have moved here. A lot of people from Washington and Seattle So here's have the thing, here. though. It's like when I was a kid uh -huh. right, living in Kalispell, you would hear people, oh, yeah, I saw Tom Cruise in town. Oh, I saw, you know, yeah. John Lithgow. I saw so-and-so. So, you know, because Big Mountain, right, I think it might have changed its name, the ski mm. resort. We don't ski, so you guys might know it better right. than we do. But Big Mountain was always a draw for celebrities, celebrities and, and people would have um, houses and ranches, you know, around and they'd come out there. So there's always been that presence. Um, right. But in the last 20 years, especially, Whitefish, which is just north of us by about a half an hour, has really turned into... You know, almost Swipey. like a like a mini Aspen or Vale. It's it's yeah. really grown, and there's so much money, and people have second homes that we're finding things here. But it's here. mini. It is mini. It's small, but we're finding things but you do in the find thrift stores friends. that you would yeah. never have found in the past. Right. So so that's good for for resellers, you know, and for just shoppers in general. They're getting quality stuff that you wouldn't normally get. Mm -hmm. But that's why we're finding things like that here. Mm -hmm. So Andrew says glass is fun. Yeah, it came in. And it's a vast category, like Charlotte oh, says. Man. So, and that's probably why I've avoided it over the years. Like I've gotten it like close. I've gotten into mugs and dishware and, you know, all sorts of decorative collectibles and things like that. But I knew glass required so much research. <laughs> but what's neat is with the different groups on Facebook that we have these days, like back when I started reselling, we, you know, there was smaller communities where you could ask for help. Um, 
but I've had studio pottery questions answered. I've had glass questions answered. You know, we found um, a Blanco vase recently mm -hmm. or bowl or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's, it's... it's a vase, I think. But anyway, um, and, you know, just kind of got someone's like, oh, here's the catalog page that that came from. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it was first started being produced in 1953. Right. And so anyway, it's just kind of fun when you have people that you can kind of pull from. So now we're a little bit more willing to kind of deep dive. And plus we've been doing this so long. We, we love the new challenges, right? We love the new, new things we can try to learn and figure yeah. out. Yeah. And I'd say like with glass, I know it's, what's kind of fun about it is at first you go in, not really knowing anything. And then over time you start to almost be able to see the quality in something you can see it on the shelf you're looking at all the stuff mm -hmm. and you're like wait a minute that's something mm -hmm. that's kind of fun to just right. kind of get that eye through it but having other people share their experience is a big part of that because otherwise you're kind of lost right right so it's nice to to collaborate with other people about you know getting more background mm -hmm. on it mm -hmm. glasses interesting that way and paula is giving her um her process using cell similar on eBay, you know, we do that a mm -hmm. lot of times too. Yeah. And then just add the photos to that draft. Yeah. And that's primarily when I was listing, cause I mostly list on eBay. Uh -huh. That's how I would do it before we switch to Vendu is cell similar. And, and that speeds things up quite a bit. Yeah. Um, let's see. Charlotte started using the AI <laughs> feature. Mm -hmm. We've played around with it too. I, I, I haven't, but I'm, I, I thought of it. <laughs> You're right. They're amusing. Some of it, you just have to like, I end up pairing so much of it out that I'm just like, anyway, but I've used it. Um, I'm trying to think maybe more. I used it on a few because I, you know, anytime eBay offers something new, I always like, kind of like, uh, do they really want me to use this? And so are they going to, are we going to do better if we're using the tools they give us? Right. And so I did it on uh, a few to like see if it would be adding like some extra keywords like kind of put my bullet points at the top and leave mm -hmm. their flowery stuff at the bottom and just see if the extra keywords helped at all you know with your listing but i didn't do anything like scientific about that a favorite glass pottery facebook group so there's um on facebook there's one called studio pottery identification and then in parentheses us united states um and they've been really helpful you post photos the the item the bottom and then you have to mention where you found it what part of the country you found it in so that kind of helps people uh, narrow things down and then glass there's some there's some uh actually Can a lot of times in in the video later I, I might be able to, yeah. Or I might do a video on some of my favorite Just Facebook so that they groups. Have, you know, it's nice thing. to have a resource right. to go back to. And then um, there is one group I start off with. It's actually Crazy Lamp Ladies group on Facebook, Old Things, Old Things Pickers or something like that. And um, they there's a lot of glass people in there because Crazy Lamp Lady does a lot of finds a lot of glass. And so I might start there and they lead me in a certain direction. But then there's a, like a Murano glass group that, I, that I'm in that have helped me before figure out if something is like a fake from TJ Maxx from China or if it's actually, you know, Italian glass or not. Um, the AI is not bad for media. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And Google Lens. Google Lens is like my favorite thing yeah, in the world I, right now. I appreciate them bringing that up because mm -hmm. I just had a friend who he doesn't sell online, but he just he's a reseller at heart, <laughs> you know, buying stuff and always at the pawn shops and, you know, mm -hmm. buying stuff for himself and then to resell. And we've talked a lot and he did some work with me before he moved out of the area. And I was telling them about Google Lens. And he kind of forgot about it. And then he texted a little while ago and said, hey, what is that thing? And so it's it's this resource that's on your phone. Right. But it's amazing for tracking things down. I, I don't know how many times recently, I you know, sometimes I, I do Lego. The boys and I will buy and resell Lego as well. 
but it's really hard sometimes to find the information on the minifigures. Mm -hmm. But if you take a picture, someone's selling something, take a picture and you get Google Lens, just that one minifigure, you instantly have it. Mm -hmm. It's such a great resource. And it I works for it. glass. Oh, it works goodness. for pottery. I, we use it at the thrift store. Constantly. I'll, I'll use the one built into eBay as well. I use the barcode scanner on eBay as well as the image search on eBay. Um, but a lot of times I'll go to Google just to just to maybe find the name of something and then I can research. Um, when I'm listing flatware, I mentioned this in one of my flatware videos, but I'm going to say it again. Replacements.com, their image search is really, really it's good. really good. So they have dinnerware and they have glass and they have flatware. Um, and you just upload a picture of what you're trying to identify. Mm -hmm. Identifying flatware patterns used to be like one of my most favorite things to do. <laughs> and I did it slow. I did it. I searched through pages and pages and pages of replacements. I used the stainless flatware book that I bought on Amazon. I loved the research. I loved every minute of it. And now it's like taking all that away, but it's faster and it's more efficient. And it tells me what, you know, the the pattern is like in yeah. seconds. Yeah. So, so like going back to glassware, mm -hmm. if you're looking, you know, cause I've done that at the store, I'll see something, some crystal goblet, you know, trying to find that. But if you Google lens it, it really gets you most of the way there. Oftentimes mm -hmm. it even pulls up the exact match, which is pretty impressive. Yep. Google adding, lens, adding, descriptions. adding, yeah, adding the word. I wish that, that I don't think the eBay one does that, but, no. but Google does. And that does help too. That helps narrow stuff down. Um, and then GI Joe weapons, accessories, well, anything totally, like that. Right? Yeah. Because anything like that, a transformer or just something that has a specific, you know, year, you know, model mm -hmm. name, it can be really difficult. You know, you search Optimus prime, you're going to get just, thousands mm -hmm. of photos mm -hmm. but if you google lens it it'll most likely get you a couple of versions that are the one you have so yeah paula once you do your google lens and you get the results up near the top is a search bar so you can just type in you can add a word you know i there. usually add a brand or something like that to to the search and then search again and so then it filters you know the google lens results narrows it down narrows it down to adding like that word to it it's a lot faster when you're in the thrift store too you know instead of trying to type it in and sift through everything mm -hmm. so chris blair the difference between lucite plastic and resin <laughs> i don't know <laughs> <laughs> no i i kind of do i kind of do yeah but it's it's a bigger topic so it probably it's a good question i, I told you i was going to be doing a identifying bake light and how to figure that out. So maybe that'll be part of, of that video is like plastics, right? So, you know, plastic kind of is the generic term kind of can cover a lot of things. Lucite to me is see-through, but there's more to that, you know, anyway, there's, and resin can be something totally different. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that, That's a really good question. But yeah. A really tough one to answer. Right. Okay. All right. So I think we caught everybody's. We got everybody's questions. We're going to have to get going. Lucite is the oh, brand name. Cool. There you go. Right. That's right. You needed to add acrylic in there too. <laughs> <laughs> and Lucite is a brand name, but it's going to be used. Um, it's going to be used not as a brand name. By, like by everybody, right? Um, even Bakelite, right? Isn't that like technically just a proprietary name for the phenolic mm. resin or whatever? So, okay. Nice, yeah. So I have like, I have a couple different pieces of like maybe a bracelet or whatever. And it'll say, you know, like genuine Lucite or, or whatever. So that's kind of nice when when you get a label right on it that tells you what to call it. <laughs> okay, so thank you. I always enjoy your channel. Congratulations on 5,000 subs. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I am going to, hopefully, if technology, um, if technology cooperates with me today, this should just save and I will get it posted 
onto my channel. So if you missed part of it or missed the beginning of it, you'll be able to watch the whole thing. But we are going to be ending the stream now. Yeah. Thank you all. We really appreciate it. And have a good rest of the Monday night and rest of the week. And I'll see you later in the week with some more videos. Bye. <laughs>